Hi everyone, Susan Storm here, and today I want to talk to you about the ISTJ Introverted Sensing, Introverted Feeling Loop. This is a phenomenon that happens with ISTJs where they can become more one-sided and imbalanced because they get stuck in the introverted part of their personality type. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Um, if you don't know who I am, I'm the founder of psychologyjunkie.com, a blog about personality types. I'm also a certified MBTI practitioner. So let's move on to ISTJs. Let's break down what a loop is. Okay, in personality theory, each type has a cognitive function stack, four primary functions that they use in a dynamic way to make good decisions and to observe the world around them and to stay in tune with their inner desires, reflections, and feelings. For ISTJs, the function stack is composed of these four primary functions. The dominant function, which is introverted sensing, or SI for short. The auxiliary function, which is extroverted thinking, or TE for short. The tertiary function, which is introverted feeling, or FI for short, and the inferior function, which is extroverted intuition, or NE for short. Now, what is a cognitive function stack? What are cognitive functions? I like to think of them as tools in a toolbox that you're constantly using to make decisions and, and to observe the world and understand it, but you don't really realize you're doing it. It's not like you're like, I'm going to grab my extroverted thinking now and fix this problem. You just use them without having to put a lot of effort into it, especially if they're your top functions. For example, if you're an ISCJ, you don't really have to think about using introverted sensing. It comes pretty naturally. It's your most natural mode of being, kind of like breathing. You don't think about it. You just breathe. So for ISDJs, introverted sensing isn't something they tend to have to think about. They just do it without even having to try. But it is still a mental tool. It's still something they use to understand the world and their place in it. And your auxiliary function, we like to think of this as the support function for the dominant function. So for ISCJs, the support function is extroverted thinking. This takes a little more energy and conscious control to use than introverted sensing for the ISCJ, but it's still fairly natural. This is the side of the ISCJ that is focused on objectivity, logic, getting things done in the most efficient and effective way. There's a big focus with extroverted thinking on resources, time, return on investment, metrics, and pass-fail, making sure things get done in an orderly, timely, effective way. And also keeping an eye on whether things seem logically consistent in their decisions. When they have a decision to make, they're less concerned with how everyone feels or what their emotions are telling them. They're more concerned with how can we get the job done in the most effective way, what's the most logical choice, and they tend to step out of decisions in order to see them objectively and not be swayed by personal bias. These are all things that extroverted thinking contributes to. And then we have introverted feeling, and this is about personal values, deeply held personal values. What is important to me? What matters to me as an individual? How do I feel about things? So even though ISCJs tend to look very um, reserved, very serious on the outside, they actually have this very sensitive, introverted feeling core that a lot of people aren't aware of, but it's very, very important and personal and powerful within their own lives. And then we get to inferior function, extroverted intuition, and that's the part of the ISCJ that they feel the least control over. Um, they have a lot of uncertainty around this function, and that's about seeing connections and patterns that are lie outside the boundaries of just what they can observe and test through their senses. So um, when you brainstorm ideas, when you imagine lots of different possibilities, when you think outside the box, connect the dots, when you're dealing with a lot of abstract concepts, you're in the world of extroverted intuition. And while ISCJs aspire to tap into this function and use it well, it's often a stumbling block. It's often something that takes a lot of energy and can create a lot of stress if they have to rely on it a lot in their lives. Now, when an ISTJ is in a healthy mental space, they're using all four of these functions to some degree. But they, um, when they're in a loop, they bypass their extroverted functions and stay cycling between introverted sensing and introverted feeling, which can create a very one-sided personality type. And that's what we call an SIFI loop. So what exactly does this loop look like? Let's break it down, starting with introverted sensing. 
So as we've talked about, introverted sensing is the dominant function for ISTJs. SI is all about relying on past experiences, memories, and details to navigate the present. It focuses on the subjective personal associations with the outer experience. They have a strong sense of the historical background of any familiar situations. For example, they don't just see a pine tree. They see their personal associations with the pine tree. For example, I climbed one of these when I was 10 years old and it smelled like Christmas. There were squirrels hiding in the branches. Or I remember learning that pine trees are actually helped by forest fires and the cones of some species of pine trees open up and dispense their seeds during a fire. So when ISTJs are in that an, an, an experience, they tend to be transported to their past experiences and the facts and associations related to that experience, to that sensory experience that they're in. This helps ISTJs to have this very deep historical data bank to draw from in order to set and stabilize routines and traditions and keep memories alive. Here's an example. I once knew an ISTJ who could recall every tiny detail about his childhood on a farm. Every detail. He loved doing things the old-fashioned way, the way he'd been taught, because it was reliable. And when people would suggest he use newer methods or use different pesticides, he was always a bit grumpy. Like, it always frustrated him to have to adapt to some new way of doing things because he didn't like switching up his routines and traditions. The things that he had done since childhood had special meaning for him. They made him feel good and content, and he felt like he was carrying on something from his past, and that gave him a sense of satisfaction. That said, he did tap into his extroverted thinking side and look at the situation objectively, try to step out of his personal feelings, and if the new suggestion made sense, he would switch. So his extroverted thinking helped him to make the most logical decision, even if his introverted sensing kind of wanted him to stick with the way things had always been done. So while I, SI is great for consistency and historical associations, if ISDJs rely on it too much, it can make them very resistant to change and it can get them stuck in a rut where they're not really changing when it's necessary. For example, if that same ISTJ I knew was in an SIFI loop, he probably wouldn't have actually considered using new equipment on the farm. He probably wouldn't have considered using the newer, better pesticides. Instead, he would have just stayed with what he knew and it would have set him back and made him unable to meet the monetary demands that he needed to meet in his farm. So introverted feeling. When introverted feeling is in balance, it's really important for ISTJs. It helps them to think about their own values and what matters to them. Sometimes ISTJs who are out of touch with introverted feeling can get overworked. They take on too much. They're so focused on objectifying their feelings and focusing on what tasks need to be accomplished that they aren't thinking about what actually matters to them as an individual outside of these tasks. So it, it is important. Some people vilify the tertiary function, and I think that's really um, detrimental because I think it's super important because I've known so many ISTJs who didn't really tap into this function, who didn't prioritize it, and they ended up unhappy, working all the time, taking on a lot. They were very logical, but they just weren't in touch with what they wanted, and so they weren't very happy people. So it is really important, but if you're just in this loop between introverted sensing and introverted feeling, then you don't have your co-pilot to help keep you balanced and supported as well. So when ISTJs are in a loop, instead of relying on extroverted thinking to help guide them in their decisions, they become much more focused on the emotional component of their decisions, how they feel, what matters to them as an individual. Their decisions become more subjective. They are constantly replaying memories and justifying their actions based on their personal values. Then there's the emotional component as well. Um, this often happens without real-world checks, so their perspective tends to become a little bit warped. Our extroverted functions keep us engaged with the external world. Our introverted functions keep us attuned to our inner desires, reasonings, and reflections. We need both. I once knew an ISTJ who was in this particular loop. He was retired and he stayed home all day watching John Wayne movies and listening to his favorite music. And it was mu music from the 1950s and the 1960s, and then it kind of just cut off right there. He was angry at the world and all the injustice in it and all the change in it. And he would just rather stay in his chair, re-watching his favorite movies, re-listening to his favorite music, and living as if he was still in that space of being in the 1950s and 60s. But um, he never really went anywhere or did anything. His relationship suffered as a result. Loops can feel 
comfortable and cozy because they're directed towards your natu natural preference. So if you're an introvert, you're staying in an introverted headspace. If you're an extrovert and you're going through a loop, you're staying in an extroverted headspace. There's this natural tendency to want to stay parked in your introverted side if you're an introvert or your extroverted side if you're an extrovert. So it's, it's very normal for people to go through periods of looping, but it's very, it's very important to be able to spot when you're in it and find a way out because it can really cause a lot of stagnation in your life. So how do you know if you're in an SI, FI loop? Here's a few ways, signs, <laughs> that you could be. One, you retreat from the outside world and you tend to avoid your responsibilities. So you, you want to pull away and get inside yourself as much as possible. You're not as interested in your external tasks or your external relationships. Two, you're less objective than usual and your decisions become more weighted by your emotions, your values, and your traditions, and your past memories. Um, so you lose that unbiased objectivity that ISTJs are famous for. Three, you start forming rigid judgments about other people without talking to them or getting new information. You tend to just form these preconceptions based on past information or that based on gut feelings, and you're not balancing that with that unbiased objectivity as well. Number four, you feel easily frustrated when challenges arise that force you to deal with anything in your external world. That's just, you know, if, if something comes up, a crisis with a person that you have to help them or something's broken on the house and you have to fix it, you just want to stay in this comfortable, introverted place and really you don't want to put any energy into the external world. Number five, you justify questionable decisions based on your personal morals. You find a way to make it personally right and that becomes the important thing, even if maybe that's not the objective truth of the matter, because you're becoming ungrounded when you're in this SIFI loop. So if this sounds familiar, don't worry, don't beat yourself up. We've all been in loops before. I'm an INTJ and I've definitely been in an NIFI loop, so I know how this feels. But there are some ways to get out of this and to become more balanced and to get back in touch with your extroverted thinking side. So how do you activate extroverted thinking and break free from a loop? Here are just a few steps. One, challenge your thinking. Evaluate your ideas logically. Are they based on facts or feelings? Write things down, look for contradictions, and force yourself to question your assumptions. You could also talk out your um, ideas with someone you trust, someone who would be willing to tell you the truth, but who would also be doing it in a kind way. Two, set clear goals. TE loves clear, measurable steps. Setting smart goals can help you break out of the loop and get back to being productive. If you can measure it, you can track progress and adjust when needed. Three, when you have an important decision to make, try to step out of the situation to see everything, the facts and the logic, objectively. Don't immediately make a decision based on your personal feelings. While your personal feelings might be relevant and important, they should be one part of the equation and not the entire, um, the entire sum. Think about what the facts are, so engage your sensing side. Think about what the logic is, what the most logical thing to do is, what your resources are, um, what the end result is likely to be, the pros and cons, etc. And then think about what is important to you, what are your emotions telling you, but it should all be included versus just jumping to make a decision based on what's comfortable for you or what emotionally feels right. That should be considered, but it should be one part of the equation. Next, test your ideas in the real world. This is crucial. Don't let your thoughts just stay in your head. Take action. Whether it's a project you've been avoiding or a conversation you've been putting off, the more you engage with reality, the less you'll rely on the loop. Next, you could organize something, whether it's a cabinet, a bedroom, your work desk, try to organize that part of your life in the most efficient way possible. Think if this video has helped you to understand the SIFI loop, let me know in the comments. Have you experienced this loop? What strategies have helped you get out of it? I would love to hear your thoughts. If you would like to find out more about the SIFI loop, I have written an article about this. I actually published it yesterday. So I will include a link in the description. You can read more about that there. Um, you can find 
over a thousand articles about personality type on my website at psychologyjunkie.com. I hope to see you next time. Please like and subscribe for more, and see you next time.